in Psalm 46. If you did not bring your Bible with you, there's one in the pew in front of you. I encourage you to open it up. Turn to page 557 where we can read the scripture together. Again, it is Psalm 46. And there it's written, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling, Selah. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage. The kingdoms totter. He utters his voice. The earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Selah. If you would please join me in prayer. O holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So last week we began this three-week focus here on Psalm 46, and, and we and we focused really in that, that first verse, that God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. That, that God is in fact our fortress. He, he's the fortress that when the earth is collapsing all around us, we can go to God and there we will find security. We will find refuge and strength. That it is us going to God with our trust in Him as our good Father that He protects us. That when a terrible, earth-shattering trouble befalls us, it is God who is present with us. For He is our refuge and strength. But why? Why is he our refuge and strength? What makes him our refuge and strength in the midst of trouble? In this second section of Psalm 46, David makes it clear that though the world may dissolve around us, God does not. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. We live in an ever-changing world. For we have developed languages. We eat with utensils not made of stone. We have air conditioning and water closets inside of our buildings now. We live in an ever-changing world. Kingdoms have come, empires have fallen. The population has changed around the world, but what has not changed is God. For God does not change. He is the same today that he was yesterday, and that he will be tomorrow, and the day after tomorrow, and next week. And in the years to come, God is immutable, meaning he is unchanging. Why can we seek refuge and strength in God? Because God 
does not change. As our fortress, we can go to him and we know that when we go to God, when he sits on his throne because of what Christ has accomplished, we will receive grace and mercy. We will be embraced by our Father in heaven for he does not change. His character and who he is remains the same. And so we have this trustworthy source. There is something we can count on. There is an expectation when we go to God that God will bring peace and comfort to us because that is who God has been and is and will be. God does not change. For he is with us. The Lord of hosts is with us, the way David writes it, the Lord of hosts. He's saying that the Lord of all the angel armies in heaven is with us. In an earlier psalm, he writes, if God is for us, then who can be against us? He is our refuge and strength, the mighty fortress indeed, because he doesn't change He can be trusted. See, in this ever-changing world we live in, though, we are told many different times and in different ways the earth is in fact collapsing around us. That this new thing that's happening is, is a sign of the destruction of the world. Folks, the earth has been collapsing around us for years, decades centuries. Not long ago, the the news stations on TV would report the news. Tell us who, what, when, and where. And then they morphed into opinion givers, giving us their own thoughts. And they have since changed again and have become coalescing agents of fear. That what is done out there is is to drive us into fear because fear will coalesce people together because then there's something out there to be afraid of. But they still don't give us the truth because they never tell us that our refuge and strength is found in Jesus. They only give us human solutions. They only give us political solutions. They only give us power and money solutions. They do not give us the only solution that is sufficient for all of life, and that is Jesus the Christ. See, Jesus, when he's telling his disciples, he told them that that he's going to go and he's going to die. He even says that Peter is going to deny him there in the Gospel of John. And as they're there and he says... All of these things, he then in John 14 tells them, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. If we translate that here with the psalm, he says, The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. And then again in in Gospel of John, in chapter 16, he foretells again of his, his death and burial and resurrection. But he also then says that there is the Holy Spirit coming, that there is a helper coming to you, God's own spirit. And he reassures the disciples again. He says, I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But take heart. I have overcome the world. Again, we translate him with the psalm and we hear him say, The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. For when we turn to Jesus in the midst of our tribulation, he offers peace, which is refuge. He doesn't offer that the tribulation will be wiped away and everything returns to hunky-dory. But in the midst of that suffering, he is with us. That the worst suffering, 
the worst pain, the worst heartache, the, the trouble and tribulation that we will face here and now is but minor and temporary when faced with the realities of all eternity. For God, through Jesus, has secured our eternity for the believers. See, John continue, or Jesus continues there in the Gospel of John in that first one when he says, let not your hearts be troubled. The very next thing, he, he talks about this fortress. He says, in my Father's house, also known as a fortress, are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you, for I go to prepare a place for you. While we fret over life's difficulties, Jesus reassures us that he has secured our future. And it is good. It is very good. See, with God as our fortress, his presence in our lives transforms how we can interact with the world. While the world tries to instill fear into us and use it as an agent to divide and to destroy us, With God's presence in our lives, dear Christian, no longer must we be crippled by fear. I've got a photo to share with you this morning. So in 1985, this is how you teach a kid how to swim. That's me there in the deep end at the YMCA in Plainview, Texas. That is my mom on that plank known as a diving board. I believe this is where I got my fear of heights at two and a half years old being thrown off a diving board. But this is how you teach kids how to swim. Back back when I was a child, you would go to the swimming pool. There would be an instructor standing off to the side. My dad's there in the deep end. And they go and walk you off the diving board because I'm not crazy enough to walk off a plank and jump into the deep end of water that I can't swim in on my own and get thrown in. There's my dad, and he's there as I'm crying, wailing, not wanting to go, saying, it's okay, I've got you. And there I go, getting thrown in. And sure enough, I stand here today because he caught me. There's many places in our life where we walk up to that edge and the very next step is a big drop into the deep end. Unsure of our own survival, fear can cause us to be stationary in that moment. Yet as David describes in the psalm, And as my dad so graciously showed to me, our Father who is in heaven is in the midst of that trouble, in the midst of that deep fear we have. It's okay. I got you. You can trust me. Trusting God is so hard. Even if we've had to trust him before in a difficult circumstance, this next one I'm currently going through, it's, it's harder and it's different than the rest. How do I know I can trust God? Because when we look into the deep end of the trouble we face, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Our Father in heaven, says he's got us. Amen. Amen. This morning, we're going to stand and sing in response to God being in the deep ends of our life, there to hold on to us, to, to receive us. And as we stand and sing, in your heart, you want to put your trust in Jesus for the first time, come forward as we sing. Or if you want to join First Christian Church of the Beaches, that this is your church family, and you can't wait to be a part of it with these flawed, 
imperfect people seeking Jesus. Come forward as we stand and